All right, but I, just like I told you folks, we're gonna start our talking about our, our muzzle loaders and shooting them, different ones. Now, this particular one is a 40 caliber flintlock with um, got a peep side on it that I made, a 42 inch barrel built on a Kentucky rifle style. Now, this is my squirrel rifle. I'll try to hold these up for you. See if you can tell the difference. Now, that's what a squ squirrel hunt with. And that's what a deer hunt with. That's a 54, and that's a 40. Big difference. Now, our state laws, this rifle is a legal caliber. I, I don't think I want to shoot a deer with it, but uh, a lot of guys do. I talked about a saw on the... On the at the state channel the other day, they were trying to legalize 30 calibers, 36 calibers. Because he's talking about these guys have these guns for small game and target shooting. And they felt like they ought to be able to deer hunt with them. Well, I'll argue that point because I've shot a lot of deer with a muzzle loader. A lot of deer. Killed them with a 45, 50. 54, uh, let's see, what else, 12 gauge muzzleloading shotgun, 10 gauge muzzleloading shotgun, and you know, a muzzleloader, muzzleloader kills a lot different than a modern gun. Now granted, 30 caliber out of a 308 or 30 out of 6, well, that's fine round. But yeah, I don't think so out of a muzzleloader. That's a small game round. But uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get a shoot this this morning. We just took it out of the house and it's a sweating like a dog because it's humid 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 today but anyhow I built this rifle several years ago I um, got my forge I do a little blacksmithing I'll start at the back made my butt plate made me a patch box spring loaded carry a few cleaning tools in made the trigger guard then I made what's called a, a long peep. You can see it's a long peep. Dovetailed here, got your windage right and left. Then I tapped it, put a little set screw in it, so I got my elevation. This is a, an aperture out of a regular peep sight. But figured out what tap it was, bent this up, tapped it, and I got a peep sight. Works pretty good with these old eyes. Now, you notice the size of that hole compared to the size of that hole. Get low light. I just unscrew this and carry on about my business. The uh, I've built quite a few rifles and pistols, shotguns. We'll get into all those later. Don't have much time this morning, but I'm going to I'm going to put a little powder in the pan and see if she'll flash. But it's awful wet this morning. I don't know. It's not a good day for shooting flintlocks. Now that's uh, 4F powder. It was right in there in your flash pan. Cover it with your frizzing. Trigger set. Let's see if she'll burn. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, well, by gosh, we might be able to shoot this scudder this morning. Now, whenever, whenever you're shooting a flintlock, it's real important. Wipe that flint off after you shoot. Wipe that residue out of the pan. Make sure your frizzing, back of your frizzing's clean. Just to ensure that spark. Now, these old boys that work on these things and tune them and tune them, they talk about the speed of their lock. Well, I don't know if this one's got the speed that they're talking about, but we're going to find out. What they do, they take this rifle, they cock it, they turn them upside down, and they get these locks so fast 
that they will flash upside down. That's ready to go. Good timing. All right. Now, I'm shooting a patch round ball out of this rifle. She, uh, she's only 87 grains. That's why I'm a little skeptical about shooting a deer with it. I suppose if you made that perfect heart shot, everything would be good, but you might have, might have a good little bit of trailing on your hands. So, let your conscience be your guide if you want to try that. All right, now, I'm gonna reset the camera, and I'm gonna load it up, and I'll fire around off. On a 40 caliber, 45 and below, I like to shoot a 3F powder. Smaller grains, burns a little faster, a little hotter. All right, 40 grains of powder. Give her a little tap. All right, now, I'm hunting. Use a loading block. Your balls is already patched. What you do, take your ball starter, give it a little slight push, where it's sticking out the bottom. You lay that over your bore. Get her in place, pop it, use the long end now, get her down. Lord, it's hot, people. Whew. All right, yeah, good load. Always make sure she's down on your powder. All right, now, a lot of guys don't do this, but I like to do this. I've got me a little pick here. I stick it in that vent hole to make sure there's not a grain of powder got in there and blocked it. Because the way these things work, heat's what ignites these things. It helps, like you see. There it went. Nope, wrong hole. Give that a little pick, push that powder back. And I'll give her two little bits of priming powder. Shut the frizzing. We we'll give her a whirl. Let's see if she burns. Yep, she burns. Well, next time we'll get into some detailed shooting. I just wanted to let you say I wasn't messing with you about being a muzzleloader fanatic. Love my archer. Unfortunately, this is my first love. Been doing it a long time. Florida Cracker Outdoors, subscribe, keep watching.